In lesson four of unit one, we're going to take a look at irrational numbers. And we're asked in number one, and this is what you're going to put in your booklet with a square. Is this rational or irrational? Well, it's divided by a number other than zero, and it's in a form of a fraction. And if we were to do the division, we'd get a repeating pattern. So this number is rational. So starting off a little easy. Now for number two, we're asked is this number, and the number we're referring to is Euler's E, that if you have your calculator handy, you can see that somewhere on there is the letter E. And later in the course, we'll be using that E to figure things. And named after a famous mathematician who lived around the time of Benjamin Franklin. And uh, I'm not sure they knew about each other, but he was uh, doing some tremendous work in around Austria and Germany. And uh, he is again, a very famous mathematician, and has about 60 things named after him. Now, an interesting thing about the name is that you would think it would be pronounced differently, but it's pronounced Euler. Now, for number three, you're going to need your calculator, and you have to find the square root sign key, then put the square root of 17, and then they want you to round to four decimal places. So take a moment. Now you can see it's irrational because there is no pattern and it just continues off the uh, screen of the calculator. But to round to four decimal places, you count four. One, two, three, four. You go to the fifth place. If it were a five or higher, you'd drop it and then add a one here. But since it's four or less, you're just going to drop it and then this would be the answer. Now, for number four, we're going to take a look at the question. And they're saying the length of a diagonal in a box. Now, this is a three-dimensional box, is given by this formula. And I've kind of sketched it out here. And want you to include that in your notes in this way. And they're saying... The length is 5, the height is 3, well let's see if I'm getting that right here, and the wide is 3, and the height is 2. It's a little small, but uh, there it is big. Now again, you want a protocol for doing this, and depending on how your calculator works, you might put the radical sign and then a parenthesis and then another parenthesis 5 squared or again there's a number of ways you could square the 5 and get 25 these numbers aren't too big this is going to be a 9 and this will be a 4 add these together and then just take the square root of it all right take a moment see what you get 
So the square root of 38, and then when you put that into your calculator, you get this. Now they're asking you to round to one decimal place. So one decimal place would be there. So you go to the place next to it. It's a six. So you're going to drop all this and add one to the one. So this then becomes 6.2 as your final answer. And if you have a question, be sure to be asking those. Now for number five, we're working with Heron's formula. And I will write it big up here. So this one is somewhat tedious, but again, since you can use a calculator and not have to figure it out by hand, as some of us did in the old days, let's take a look at this. So we need to find what S is. They're giving us values for A, B, and C. So first, let's find out what S is. So S will be, now we could change this to 0.5 if you like. And we're going to multiply that by the sum of these three. 545 plus 449 plus 634. And add these together and take half of it. Let's see what you get. So in setting it up, take a moment now and copy this down. We're just following Heron's formula. And theoretically, you could put all of this in or just do this calculation and then take the square root of that number. Now, notice what they want you to round. They want you to round to the nearest thousand square yards. Okay, so your answer is going to have three zeros at the end after you round to, to the nearest thousand. Take a moment, see what you get. So looking at possible aids to calculate this. After I put it in, I did it this way. And then I did the subtraction and did it this way. And I got the same answer. So again, the slightest little number off may uh, throw you in the wrong direction. So this is what I got. Now we are to round to the nearest thousand. So that would be these last three. So this 9 will make this 9 a 1. So this will make this 1, 2, 0, 120. And then our three zeros for rounding this off, dropping all of this and making these zeros. And then adding 1 there gives us this. All right, so this was quite tedious and, uh, again, uh, a challenge. So after all of that, this is relatively easy. Using your calculator to approximate this to four decimal places. Give it a shot. So four decimal places would be there. Here, the fifth decimal place is a four, so we just drop it. And this is our answer. Again, if you have a question, be sure to be asking. Now, for number seven, we're asked to combine these radicals. And we had said in our flip classroom lesson that if you have something under a radical sign and they're the same, then we just add 
the coefficients or the whole number outside and we just leave the radical the same. So it's sort of like adding uh, 4a plus 8a gives you 12a's. So this will be 12 the square root of 7. Now, in example 8, they're giving you just a protocol to follow using your calculator. And what you're asked to do is to put in there 1.1 caret, and then to the 10th power, and 1.01 .01 caret to the 100th power, and so on and then see your results, and then what do you note happens? So take a moment to do that and see if you can match it up with, this is some theoretical mathematics here, and we're dealing with Euler's E. And the answer is the values seem to be approaching the value of E that you get 2.7 and then as you can see this is irrational and Euler when he figured this out this was quite a, a skill back in those days because they didn't have calculators wow this is our last example we don't have a tenth one and as we look at this we are asked to find the root of this real number, which is the fourth root of this radicand. Now, some of you may not know how to put that into your calculator, but there is a kind of a shortcut way. Now, this number has apparently no exponent, but there is an exponent of one there that we just don't write. So when you have an index number that's greater than 2, uh, like 3 or 4 or 5, and you're asked to take that root of a radicand, you just convert this to a fractional exponent. And the way we do it, we take our radicand, there's our radicand, and the exponent on that radicand, which is 1, becomes the numerator of our fractional exponent, and the index number becomes the denominator. So try this by putting it in your calculator. Put this base now, the caret sign, and then you have to put a parenthesis, and then just go 1 divided by 4 close the parenthesis, hit enter, and see what you get. And the answer is 9. So if we were to raise 9 to the fourth power, we get this. But again, our answer here is just the 9. Okay, well, you'll be having your test shortly on Unit 1 made up of these four lessons, and good luck.